Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Oh, great news. Divi has just released loops for the Divi 5 theme here and it's absolutely awesome. It's gonna be a game changer. I've used them before with things like Elementor and you can pull bits of your database in and make things up. Today, we just used loops to make this little post slider right here. Really easy to do. I'll show you exactly how to do it and some of the awesome things you can do with the loops. So let's get started. I'm going to start a new page. I'm going to call my loops, funnily enough. And of course, we we'll use the Divi Builder. Okay, once in there, it's going to prompt us to put in a row. Now I'm going to put in a row of three columns. It doesn't matter too much at this point, but that's the sort of size that I want my little postcards to be. And you can adjust this, like I say, later on. I'm going to use a group module. What we're going to do, we're actually going to build our module first. And then we'll use loops to duplicate it. And I'll show you how to link this to the appropriate posts. Okay, so we've got a group module in here. My card, like the page, is going to have an image at the top. So I'm just going to add an image module. And I'm going to have this link to the appropriate post in a moment also. I'm going to leave that just like that. Under our image, I'm going to hit the little black add new module button here. I'm going to have a heading, funny enough for the heading. That's a little too big for me. I'm going to leave it pretty much on the default. Let's go to design. I want to take that heading text down. I don't want it to be a heading one. Let's make it a heading three, perhaps. Now I'm going to throw it in the middle. And let's just use the default blue color today. Perfect. Now after the title, I'm going to use a little text module just for a bit of content. Again, hit the little black button. Go all the way down the bottom, there's a text module. Again, I'm going to leave it with a regular content in there because we're going to replace this with dynamic content. So it's going to pull the excerpt of our little post in this particular case. So I can leave it just like that. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a little read more button or a button on the bottom as well as having various other elements linked to your post. So let's do that. Let's just throw in a button. We'll put in what we want the button to say right here. And I am gonna slightly customize that button so it's slightly more interesting. Let's go to our design here, down to button, use custom styles, button background. Well, I'm gonna make that background black. I don't really want a border on there. I'm gonna take that away by just taking the border width down to zero. Button text, again, we'll use the default blue. It's pretty close to what it's got there. Text size, I'm gonna take that down a bit. When we roll over, it's got a bit little button icon as default. I'm gonna leave that just like it is. I'm gonna make my button a bit wider by giving it more spacing left and right. Let's make that 50, hit the chain and we'll do both sides. Perfect, we're about there. I'm gonna give it rounded corners back in the button here, button border. I'm gonna make that 20 pixels. We're about there. I want this to be in the middle. So we can do that with alignment there. And that's perfect. I might make that text uppercase by going back into the button, button text. Great, well, the only other thing I really wanna do here is our text module, I'm just gonna click on it. I'm gonna align that to the middle too text just to finish off let's give our group a little background here gray tab for the group that we've got all these modules in background i'm going to make this a nice dark gray similar to what i had before something like that now i want a bit of padding on the bottom there i'm going to round off these corners and we should be good to go i need to make that text light also so if we go over to design and spacing we can add a bit of padding to the bottom here by going into the bottom. Let's perhaps give it 50 pixels. I'm happy for the image on the top to remain there touching the top. While we're here, we'll round off those corners over in border right here. Just gonna throw in 25, perfect. Now I just need to make that white so we can see it a little better. Click on that one. Text, I'm gonna make it light in color. Perfect. We need to give it a bit of space either side because I don't want it touching the sides there. I'm sure you know how to do that. We close up our text. Spacing is just down here. 
Just going to give it a bit of panning left and right. Let's say 25 pixels for argument's sake. Hit the chain so it does both sides. Great. Well, we've got the basis of our card here. Now, once you're happy with your card, we can decide what we want to do with the various elements of it. And it's going to reproduce itself when we loop it. Okay, like I said earlier, I'm using posts to do mine today. So you need to have posts if you want to do what I'm doing. Loops can take pretty much anything from your database. Well, I've got some posts created here. We go down to posts. And I've just created some posts here as of crazy cars. I've given a couple of different categories, concept cars and supercars. For anybody that doesn't know, let's just create a new category. If you go up to categories here, just give it a name. I'll call this one XYZ. Give it a slug. If you've got a parent category you want, want to put it in, you can do. If you want to put a description in there, you can do as well. I'm going to leave it just like that. Hit the Add Category button. As you can see, it's popped up here. Now, if we go back to our posts, to put any of your posts into a category, just hit the Quick Edit. Then you'll see the categories listed here. You can check the ones you want it to be in and uncheck the ones you don't want it to be in. Once you're done, hit Update. Now, as I said, I'm going to use the post image. I'm going to use a post excerpt. I'm going to use loop links to link to these posts once we've built it. Now, for anybody that doesn't understand that, I'm quickly going to build a post here. If you know what you're doing with that, just move on. So let's add a new post. Now, I'm going to use a full width layout without a sidebar. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here where it says right sidebar. I'm going to say no sidebar. Now we can give our post a title. I got some info over here. So I'm going to pop my title in. These are fictitious supercars. <laughs> I'm going to use the Divi Builder, but I'm keeping this really simple. All I'm going to put in here is a text module in a single row. And I've got a little bit of text over here. Yeah, let's copy that. And we'll make that a title also. I'm flying through this very quickly. I'm sure most folks know exactly what they're doing. I'll make that into a heading three. Great. But when we pull this post up and when people view it, I'm going to have the title, the metadata, then I'm going to have a big picture of the actual car itself that I'm going to have here. It'll automatically put the featured image in. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, what on earth is a featured image? Well, once you've got your content in your little blog posts here, I'm using the default post builder. I'll be doing some videos on post templates in the future. So once we've got our little bit of content in there, I'm going to go up here where it says page. Click on that. And it's already got our title in here. We can put an excerpt. And I'm going to pull this into our little card as well. So let's just perhaps select a bit of this text here. I'm going to use just a sentence of it. Yeah, that's more than I need. Let's put. Just that much is going to work for me. Now the featured image, this is the image that's going to end up at the top here. And also, it'll be pulled into the top of our cards. So let's add an image. We'll put one of these crazy cards in. As you can see, it's popped it in there. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to leave it just like that, just to show you how to make a post. I'm going to go ahead and publish this post, the Obsidian, the Obsidian Reaver. We'll have a quick look at it. Here's the picture of that crazy car. Here's that little bit of text I put in there. Fantastic. Well, let's go back down to our dashboard. Back to our post. There it is right there. We published it, but we've not given it a category. So to give it a category, let's just hit the quick edit. And we don't want it uncategorized. I'm going to put it in concept cars. And supercars, perhaps. And just for fun, let's add a few to that new category that we put in there. So once you put it in, you can set a date if you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and update it. As you can see, there it is right there. Let's just add that XYZ to a couple more, maybe two more. Quick edit. Let's add this one. Update. And here's another. Update. Great. Well, we've got posts and we've got categories. We can start making a bit of magic on our page here now. What I'm going to do is save draft. I'm just going to quickly refresh this page. That way our loops are going to pull from all that latest content we just built. 
Okay, now we can start populating this. We've got an image here that we want to pull in. To make this happen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the row, the green tab. Once in the row, I'm going to go into the column. I'm actually going to delete columns two and three because we're not using them. Once in the column, I'm going to go down where under content, you'll see loop down here. Watch what happens when I hit loop element switch. It's thrown in a whole bunch of loops here. And that doesn't look too good. It sort of stretched them out. I've got a slider down the bottom, which means they're spilling out of our container here, which is not good. So initially fix that part. We can go back into our row. If we hit return on the column, we're back in the row now. If we go over to design and layout, make sure flex is selected. We go down to the bottom here. We can hit wrap. Perfect. And it's wrapped them into our little row right here. And let's put 10 in because as you saw in the column, I'll zoom back there. We go back to our column here where we enabled the loop. We're looping a post type. We've selected posts. Then you can select pages, media, projects. Here we can select a category. If I left click on this, you'll see it's got all the categories. We've got supercars, Goldwing, Concept, and XYZ we put in there. So I know all of them are actually under supercars. So throw in whichever one you want. So we've got categories of supercars right here. You can exclude posts right here with terms. Include them same way here. Exclude specific posts. You can add meta queries here if you need to. And we'll be covering that in future videos. You can choose to order them by published state, descending, ascending, and how many posts. Here it is what I was telling you earlier. We've got 10 here. I'm just going to leave it on that. Obviously, if you want more, put more. But I know I've only got about eight posts in that category anyway. If you want to offset, you can do so here by putting in a number and depending on whether you're descending and what the date is, you can offset the first one. Great, well, let's make the actual magic happen. We want individual images here, individual titles from the post here, individual excerpts here, and we want the buttons to link to each appropriate post. So let's start with the images. And it doesn't matter which of these you go into, it's going to do all of them for you. So remember, we've got a row, green tab, now we've got our image module, the black tab, and the group that all the modules are in is the light gray tab. And that group is an awesome thing. I'm going to go into my image. Instead of selecting an image, I'm going to go up where it says image here and roll over to the right hand side. A little icon that looks like some hard drive disks, left click, loop featured image. Left click on that. Bingo, we've got all our lovely little featured images. Remember when we built our post, we put a featured image in the page there. That's what's that pulling in. We can do exactly the same for the title. Like I say, it doesn't matter which one you go in. We're going to do the same thing. Heading, roll over the little disc icon, left click, loop post title. They've got their unique titles there. And you guessed it, what are we going to do for the excerpt? Going to go in here. It says body in our little disc icon once more. Loop excerpt. Fantastic. Now we want our buttons to click and go to the individual posts here. So let's click on a button. In the link, we can go up to button link URL. There's our little icon. Loop link. Perfect. And I think I want my image to link there as well. So let's go back into the image again. Again, it doesn't matter which one you go into link. You can have them open in a light box if you want to. I'm going to go to image link down below. There's our little icon. Loop link. Fantastic. Now when you put your loop link in, it does ask you for a before and an after if you want to put some text before. As we're using a button and an image here, we don't need any of that. I'm just going to hit apply. Now the only other thing, I've just noticed a couple of these are slightly shorter than the others because of the amount of text that's in them. You could give the group a minimum height to fix that if you wanted to. Just go into any group module, design, sizing. We've got a minimum height here. At the moment it's auto. Let's guess that. Let's try 450 
probably too long. Let's go up here. Maybe not long enough. 500. A little too long. 5,000 then. <laughs> 500 is going to work. They're all about the same. Of course, if you wanted the buttons all lined up exactly, you could use a bit of flex CSS on that. Or you could give a fixed height to your little text module here. Just give it enough height that it can fit all the text of your longest text in there. That would do the same thing and your buttons would be in the line. Okay, well, that's working great on desktop. Let's have a look on tablet. Yeah, it's just not quite working on tablet. There's too much info there. They're getting a bit squashed up. So on tablet, I'd kind of like to perhaps just have two side by side. So we can fix that very easily. We want to be in our column. We're in the group at the moment. Let's go into the row, the green tab again. Go into the column. If we look under design and sizing, at the moment we're on a third. If we change this to a half. Great, we got two. Perfect. Now let's have a look on mobile. It's already taken it down on one for us, so that's going to work perfectly. We've got everything we need in there there. On the tablet, we should have two columns. And obviously, just adjust it right here. Remember, we're in the actual column itself. It's giving it a width, and you've got plenty to choose from there, or you can put in a custom one if you want to right there. And back to desktop. Great. Well, let's save this. Make sure all the links and everything is going to work on the front end. I'm going to go ahead and save draft. Now well, let's preview. There we have it. This one, when I link the picture, should take us to the Obsidian Reaver. Well, there we are. We're in the little post that we made earlier on in the video. Fantastic. And let's make sure the buttons are going to take us somewhere. It should take it to this thing, Dragon Mirage. Perfect. And everything's lined up nicely there. So there we have it, guys. Here's just a little first look at the fantastic new loop feature that they've just added to Divi 5 here. It really is a game changer. And we'll be doing a lot more videos on this as we go along. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Plenty more DV5 videos coming up. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you. or make a little demo video just like this one. Let's make sure it's going to work on tablet mobile too. I should have done that earlier. I'm using Google Chrome right here. I'm going to hit my F12 key with the inspector tools. Here we have it on an iPad Air. Great. Two calls. And quick check on an iPhone. And we got our one columns there. Perfect. Everything's working. Okay, well, once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.